In order to establish a connection between two or more devices on a computer network, we may need an Ethernet hub as a concentrator. This means that the hub is at the center of the connection to which other devices are connected. We can also see that physically, the network looks like a star, but logically, it functions like a bus network because if one computer intends to send traffic to another computer, all computers receive the shared data since they all share the link. However, the actual computer meant to receive the data will be identified during the second layer of processing where the destination MAC address is verified. Since the other devices do not need to receive this data in the first place, a more intelligent device known as a switch is used. What the switch does first of all is to isolate these links or collision domains. After doing this, whenever the switch receives a frame, it checks the destination MAC address and bridges the connection so that it only sends data to the device that needs it. Today, we'll talk about the Ethernet switch and how it helps in efficient forwarding of data between devices on a computer network. Hello guys, welcome to my presentation on data link layer devices and we'll talk about the Ethernet switch. The Ethernet switch is commonly described by the following. Originally, it is designed as a data link layer device. It isolates collision domains and it forwards received frames based on the destination MAC address contained in the frame. Ethernet switches have multiple interfaces to interconnect devices and this depends on the model of the device. Real life switches may have about 24 interfaces or less. Others may have as much as 48 interfaces. Every interface on a switch has a unique MAC address which is burned into its network interface card. Let's talk about how a switch operates. First of all, Every device connects to an interface or port on a switch. For this illustration, we'll use the notations port 1, port 2, port 3, and port 4 to identify the ports on the switch to which these end stations are connected. We'll make two assumptions here. 1. All computers here know each other's MAC addresses. And 2. The switch is brand new and has no knowledge of the computers connected to it. Now, PCA attempts to send a frame to PCB. It adds into the frame header its MAC address in the source MAC address field and the MAC address of PCB in the destination MAC address field. The switch receives this frame sent from PCA. Being an intelligent device, it checks the destination MAC address field in the frame header and then checks its database to know which of its ports is mapped to the device with that MAC address. This database is called a MAC address table. Since this switch is new, the MAC address table is empty and holds no entries. There is a popular saying that goes like this, if you don't know where you're going, you should at least know where you're coming from. The switch clearly does not know where this frame is to be sent, but it knows the ports on which the frame was received. In order to avoid similar problems with forwarding a frame to PCA in the future, it adds the MAC address of PCA in its MAC address table and maps it to port 1. Finally, as the switch does not know where the data is going, it temporarily acts as a hub and bridges all the connections so we can flood the frame with the assumption that it reaches the device with that destination MAC address. This method of processing is called flooding and a switch only does this on two occasions. One, if it does not know where the frame is to be sent and two, if the destination MAC address is a broadcast MAC address. The second mode of processing done by a switch is called forwarding and it happens when it has entries for the destination MAC address to which the data is to be sent. So, if PCA attempts to send a frame to PCD, 
The switch receives a frame and checks for the MAC address of the destination in its MAC address table. It discovers that PCD is on port 4 and then bridges the two connections in order for PCD to receive the data. It may also interest you to know that a switch may have more than one MAC address mapped to a single port. If we connect devices using a hub and connect the hub to the switch, all devices connected to the hub will be mapped to a single port on the switch. Every port on a switch is a collision domain on its own. For this collision domain, we assume PCD is sending data to PCE. As long as the destination device is on the same collision domain as the source device, the switch will always discard the received frame because a switch does not forward a frame back to the interface on which that frame was received. In summary, a switch performs three basic operations, flooding, forwarding, and discarding. A switch adds entries to its MAC address tables based on the source MAC address field in the received frame and forwards data based on the destination MAC address field in the received frame. Switches add entries to their MAC address table in two ways. One, entries learned by switches. By default, these entries expire after five minutes. If a switch receives a frame from the device with this MAC address before the entry expires, the timer is restarted. And second, entries manually configured never expire unless when deleted manually. Check out the questions on the next slide. Watch out for auto-negotiation on Ethernet to understand how devices negotiate for the best transmission speeds and duplex modes for communication. Please leave a comment share and subscribe to this channel so others can benefit too. Thank you for watching.